Um, thank you everyone for being here today. Um, it's so awesome to see so many people signed on um, as we all try to figure out how do we uh, empower our families, empower our kids, um, and really um, try to do that in a new era. None of us have done that before. Um, none of us have done this before. And so we're gonna get started. And first I'll just thank our panelists to Carrie and Darren and Dan and Amanda. Um, I'm so excited to hear from you today, but just a couple housekeeping things. Um, my name is Heidi Tandy and I serve on the Stadia team uh, with Planter Development as the associate, associate Director for Bloom. And Bloom is a ministry of Stadia that champions church planting for women. And um, But this webinar is not just for women, this webinar is for everyone. Um, we wanna make sure that all parents and caregivers, et cetera, are uh, empowered to lead their families in a way that's authentic to you um, and in a way that uh, makes it just a little bit lighter. And so we've got some pre-selected questions for our gracious panelists that are going to be uh, sharing their stories a little bit today. Um, if you want to add any questions in the Q&A window, uh, Josie is going to curate those as we go through and we'll ask our panelists in the last 10, 15 minutes at the end. And so as we get going, I want to say two things. Um, Stadia's values are, um, we have six of them. Two of them are relationships and children. And so we want to talk through um, today, how do we empower families? Because we value relationships in children so highly here at Stadia. And, but I want to acknowledge that this looks different for every family. So the goal of this webinar is not for you to be a perfect parent. The goal of this webinar is to take a step. It is to take a step or two maybe, um, to take the pressure off during this season of unknown. So grace upon grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. Um, that is where we, the posture that we wanna lead in today, not that these couples have it all figured out, but that we have some practices that work for them. That doesn't mean you even have to do the exact thing that they do, um, but how can you take a step um, to live a John 10, 10 life of abundance even through this season, okay? So um, that's where we wanna head today, and I'm excited that so many of you are on listening uh, to get empowered as leaders in your family. So uh, Dan and Amanda, will you introduce yourselves? Tell us a little bit about your family and let us get to know you a little bit. Yeah, so we, um, Dan and Amanda, we planted almost six years ago in New York City. We're originally from the Midwest, uh, moved to New York City and started what is now Mosaic Covenant Church. Um, on Roosevelt Island, and then this past year planted a second location um, in Queens. And so I'm the pastor of the church on Roosevelt Island, and he is the pastor of the church in Queens. And we don't know how it's going to work yet. It's new, so don't ask us because we don't know. Um, but we have six kids, ranging in ages from 16 down to four. Two of them we adopted out of the foster care system in Detroit and the other ones are biological. And so we're in high school down to pre-K. Yeah. And this PS, this fireplace is not in our New York City apartment. Yeah. We are out in Pennsylvania right now. Um, so we're, we're not currently in the city. So that's where we live. Yeah, and so that's, uh, yeah, our, we have four boys, two girls. Um, we have some special needs in our family too. Yeah. Um, we have a dog and a lizard because we're stupid. Because <laughs> why not? When you got six kids. When you're already crazy, why not go a little bit more? But I can't keep plants alive. So yeah, that's, true. that's a little yeah. bit about us. And so we are very much trying to navigate all of this. I have, people always, they assume, oh, you have a big family. Do you homeschool? I'm like, no, dear no. God, no, send them to school. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, um, yeah, I've said it in the last few days. I know I'm called to a bunch of things. Being a homeschool parent is not one of them at all. Like that is not it. So my hat is off to all those that are on this call that are homeschooling. Uh, I, I, that's not for me. No, or me. <laughs> oh, all right, Darren and Carrie, tell us a little bit about Team Smith. Yeah, so we're Darren and Carrie Smith. We are both part of Good News Church in Palo Ohio, which is a suburb of Columbus. 
and we will be five years old in September. So super exciting about that. I'm actually on staff full time there. I'm the director of women and children. Um, and Darren's I, not on staff. Nah, but... I'm kind of a jack of all trades. Yeah. I help on the worship team. I help in the tech booth. Um, volunteer with kids. Yeah. Um, also help with some of the church strategy as well. Yeah. And then for his normal job. Yeah, I work uh, full time for uh, Nationwide Insurance, where I'm a manager in IT and yep. uh, manage uh, an IT development line. Yeah. Um, so a little bit different. We're not kind of the lead pastors of our church, but but heavily involved um, in that way. Uh, so we have two boys. Uh, Hudson is six and Harrison is eight. Our six-year-old is in kindergarten. Eight-year-old is in second grade. They We ship them off to school every day normally as well. We do not homeschool. Um, our eight-year-old actually has a diagnosis of cerebral palsy. And today, I don't know if you can see the color. Today is actually national cerebral palsy day and you're supposed to wear green so trying to represent that so we've got some special needs in our family he's he functions at about a year to a year and a half behind his grade level um and we also my mother-in-law darren's mom yep, yep lives with us yep she's been with us for i think two and a half years now yeah yeah which is a little bit challenging but overall we're so grateful for her so mm -hmm. she's another addition to our family so no pets just a grandma yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> well dear Gary, talk about what does school life look like for you right now and ministry life and then how do you get any work done <laughs> <laughs> work What's and that same right now? question for team sadler after this <laughs> yeah so right now we're both working from home um i actually posted a picture yesterday on my facebook page all five of us were in the one one room in our house. It's like somehow we all congregate together. We've got this whole house to be in, but we're all home together. He was trying to listen in to a meeting. I was working on a book that I used with the girl I disciple. The kids were doing something else with Grandma Bev. I mean, it's just kind of crazy. We're all in this house together right now trying to work. Um, we're actually technically on spring break this week, my boys are, but I'm trying to keep kind of a schedule because we are doing distance learning here in Ohio. Um, we've been doing that for about, let's see, not this week of spring break, but the whole week before and for however long they'll tell us to. Um, with Grandma Bev being in our home, we're very lucky that we have her to help us out a little bit. Um, but I would say the biggest thing that we are doing right now to kind of make all the things work um, is just being very much rigid with our schedule and trying really hard to set boundaries. So, you know, we know when dad has a work call that he has to be in on, which is quite a lot throughout the day, mm -hmm. um, that we are, you know, in another room or outside. I'm pretty meticulous with, with that schedule. I write it out in the morning. I write next to it when someone's got to have the quiet time. So I make sure that the boys are doing something quiet. And it's been working pretty well. Yeah, praise God for a, uh, a spouse who's a former school teacher. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, I taught for 14 years before coming into full-time ministry. So, and it's funny because you'd think like I'd have it all together, but it's so hard still. <laughs> so I feel I feel even more. Uh, uh, I, I have an even bigger heart for parents who have never done any of this before because I do have a little bit of background with it, and I am able to pull on some of those uh that knowledge that i have and, and use it for our kids and their learning um yeah so we're scheduled from about 6 30 in the morning to 8 at night we hold really fast to that schedule and we are leaning into our routines more than ever right now um so you know bedtime routine and all those things that we maybe are a little more loosey-goosey on when life is just normal and fun um we really are holding tight to those so that we can be uh, done by about 8 p.m. because that's when our heads are done. Um, <laughs> we make sure our kids are done by about that time so that we can spend time together. Otherwise, I think uh, it would be more difficult. Anything else to add? That yeah, I mean, mentioned? just, uh, you know, it was definitely, a, you know, difficult at first, the first couple of days, but we found, you yeah. know, by about day three, the kids were really starting to get into a rhythm. Yeah. Um, starting to get used to um, the schedule and, and really rising to the occasion and, and really starting to figure it out. 
Yeah, we've, we've tried really hard to lean into the team aspect of our family as well. Um, you know, that we are all doing this, we're in it together kind of idea because um, otherwise I think we could easily start to become selfish in what we need or what we want in the moment, um, especially our kids is where that happens whether you're in a coronavirus time or not. <laughs> um, so really trying hard to make sure that we stick to, you know, that team idea that we're in this together. We're trying to help each other out. Um, like you were saying, Heidi, grace upon grace upon grace. We talk a lot about compassion in our house and, and making sure that we are, are keeping our relationships uh, good between each other because we're going to be close to each other for quite a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Team Sadler, talk about that. <laughs> How you've got work, you've got school, and then you both work in pastoral roles. So what does that look like for you right now? We we tried. We I tried. just am like, can you come help yeah, us? Come I know. Help us, guys. I know. <laughs> We're like, I wish. I mean, I love. Like, we've definitely. There's been a lot of like, okay, guys. Like, this is hard for everybody. We're all. You know, there's been a lot of that conversation. There's also been. Yeah, sure. I don't care. Have as many granola bars as you want. I need you to shut your mouth right now because yeah. mom's on call. I need you, you know, where you mute, you, you mute the Zoom call and turn it away real quick because you don't want people to see the, the eyes that you give your children who are just, they don't seem to have an understanding of uh, like. Our four-year-old still doesn't get it. Um, we, we did day one of homeschooling. What was that? Two weeks ago now almost? Uh, yeah, a week from, a week ago Monday. And, and we were like, because we, we have enough thousand square foot apartment um for the eight of us and so we were like yeah we're not going to be able to figure this out here with all the pivots that have to happen <laughs> so we we are l lucky enough that uh, a few years back we we purchased a a small place in the poconos to help our leaders get out of the city pretty regularly and, and for us to get out of the city pretty regularly and just to sustain life in the city over the long haul so we actually picked up and we we're like, we are out. We were in the car by 5 p.m. <laughs> having not planned to do it that day because of, it was one of the worst yeah, days it was bad. of parenting ever. So we just we just kind of went, you know what, we, we need to establish some new rhythms. And I don't know if we're going to be able to do it here and with the amount of people that know where we, where we live and the amount of people mm -hmm. that stop us on a consistent basis. I just knew it's probably not great for us to have a family of eight uh, hanging around Roosevelt Island where we live with, with the sickness being passed around because we would yeah. be passing around like crazy if we got yeah. it. So we came here, um, there's more space here. Everybody's got, um, you know, our kids are, again, we're up through high school and middle school. So thankfully New York City did a great job and they got on um, Google Classroom, which has been amazing. Um, and they're just cranking stuff out for the kids. So this week they put that into place. That's been, that's been really good. We're starting each day with them um, where they are. We're saying, well, hey, we have control of your school day now. So we're going to start where you're in scripture for a little bit. And you're going to scribe some scripture and you're going to pray with us in the morning before we kind of send you off to your corners to do your schoolwork. Um, and then ministry in the midst of this is just really funky um to not be able to go be with our people um yeah. i spent most of last week just crying about that um just wanting in the midst of crisis you know if you have a pastoral heart everything you want to do is care for people but the most loving thing i can do right now is not be in your physical presence which feels so counterintuitive um so i mean we are we are on zoom calls like this all the time um yeah we are yeah I'm, tr I'm trying right now to uh we have an 8 a.m prayer meeting every day with our every weekday with our church it's a half hour prayer meeting um and and we've started to invite our kids into it just to st have that be a, a way that they're seeing our community um and i'm usually trying to get my daily schedule and meetings and prayer and reading in prior to that mm -hmm. um, knowing that it's going to be pretty chaotic um, I think it, what's, what's been interesting is I've probably been more effective in my connections with people because Zoom just allows me to maneuver faster and get to more people than when I'm in the city. And yet at the same time with the amount of distractions that we have because the six kids are here, there's some, there's, there's some of my work that's been diminished as well. So just grace and try not to 
be too tough on myself right now. Yeah. Let's talk about what has gotten us in to in this situation in the first place. What have you guys told your kids about what's happening in the world in terms of COVID-19? I mean, we've pretty much, I mean, our kids, you know, our four-year-old doesn't understand. Um, he's sure. just like, I'm hanging out at, you know, in the Poconos and he's happy to be here. Um, but our older kids, I mean, we, we talk with them about pretty much everything all the time. Um, we definitely, in the same way that we're pastoring our people of, we believe that God didn't cause this, um, that he meets us in the midst of it. Um, we believe that, you know, we aren't to be afraid. So we're having those conversations, but we're also saying, hey, this is why, this is what's going on. This is how, no, we can't go, you know, our 11 uh, year old turned 11 yesterday. And so his birthday party was not what it was originally planned for. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I think for us, for us, a lot of the language we've tried to use has been other, like an others focus like language. Like, here's why we're doing this. We're doing this because, because one of the, one of the ways that we can care for uh, people right now and lead and be, and, and be caring for the most vulnerable is by doing, doing this. And so it did help to make the shift from our place in New York to the Poconos because we have cable television in New York and I was finding myself watching news and kids, you know, I can't sustain breaking news every 30 minutes, let alone my children. And so it's been nice to be here where we don't have access right. to that as much. Um, that's been helpful for me, but I think also for them as I become more non-anxious presence, you can tell that that's happening with them as well. Yeah. Carrie, you had you mentioned on before the call that you had some resources that you walked through with your kids that we'll share on our website. Um, but talk through those resources, Carrie. Yeah, yeah. So I was a little bit nervous in talking to this with our kids because with being you know six and eight or six and seven development wise, when it comes to this, I wanted to give them the reality, but not build fear in them. So we used. Um, a brain pop video that I found that helps explain um, the virus a little bit and uh, it's a little bit silly there's a little robot he asks questions I don't know if anybody's familiar with brain pop but that was really neat they watched that and they thought it was kind of silly and then afterwards I asked them if they had any questions and that kind of thing um, so it was very kid friendly and then I also found actually Carrie Silver she's a church planter through City as well she shared a comic that someone had drawn and um, it's a really silly comic there's a, a part in it where I think the kid farts or something which my boy is like goffed at you know they were just like that's hilarious but it really helped them to um see that you know there's a virus going on what does it look like what do we have to do in order to stay safe and then for us personally we really just try to color similar to what dan and amanda were saying we really just try to color everything through a spiritual lens and so it's not a, we can't do this just because we can't. It's a, we can't do this because we're trying to follow the government rules, not because we're afraid, but because we're trying to keep people safe and to, you know, to show them Jesus by being safe around them and that kind of thing. And um, that seems to be sticking with them uh, quite a bit, but those three resources or two resources, and then Orange put out a really great article for parents that talked about how to talk about this with your kids. Those three are the ones that I'll share with you, Heidi, to put on the website yep. um, that we've used. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I love already, we've got two different families and certain things work for one family that might not work for another family. And, and that's awesome. And that's, I think the purpose of this <laughs> webinar is for you to take something that works and hopefully it sticks for your family. Um, but I think we've, no we've noticed that there's a, a lot of information out there uh, right now with everything going on. So I like that we, that Stadia, we've got a website for you where all the stuff will be curated so you can kind of go to a one, one stop place and have some direction. Uh, you both have talked a little bit about discipleship. Um, talk about a little bit more. How are you discipling your kids during this time? Yeah, I, I mean, I think for me, 
especially living in New York, um, trying to trying to help them a non anxious presence mm -hmm. is a really is a really big deal. And so a lot of those spiritual practices of rest, solitude, Sabbath, um, that that stuff that's really hard to cultivate in New York City for me. I'm like, how do we how do we take advantage of this time with them right now to help cultivate some of that? So we. We've been taking some walks um, um, where I, I just had a great one-on-one -on -one conversation with my little girl, Lucy, she's, she's eight, where I, it was a, it's the first time in a while where I've had 45 minutes of just holding her hand and walking. Um, so, so creating space, and I think part of it too is creating space to, to help them become self-aware of what they're actually feeling. So with all of the pivots and changes that we're going through right now, I think for us personally, and then definitely for our kids, I don't know if, if there's the space to become self-aware of what they're actually feeling. So even I'm, I'm realizing like my fifth grade son potentially is, is done with his elementary school. Like didn't have all the end of year stuff didn't get to say goodbye to friends. We'll move on to different schools to different that he won't be attending. And there should be like, if he's functioning in a place of health, there should be some grieving, but if we don't have the space for that, it won't happen. And so I think, I think walks, I think asking a lot of really um, questions that help kind of excavate some of those feelings that aren't yeah. going to be at the surface are important. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys are sitting down, kind of starting your day with that prayer and scripture piece, which I love, but then just looking for parts of your day through walks and just conversations. Um, yeah, absolutely. We tell, talk about what that looks like for you guys, Smiths. Yeah. I think that with uh, a kindergarten or six-year-old boy, like to, to sit down or walk, like I would love to hold his hand and walk he doesn't do that. He runs, um, and, you know, and I'm sure you guys have felt that when your kids were little. And, and with Harrison, with some of his delays developmentally, he's just, you know, I think they're really oblivious to kind of the real impact of it. Mm -hmm. But the key that I have, we've worked on is bedtime. Bedtime seems to be when they just open up, you know, you're laying there with them in bed, you just finished reading, and just allowing them some quiet time to really say what's on their mind if they want to you know sometimes it's something silly like I remember one time you know my my six-year-old was like mom Mr. Casey doesn't have any hair and I'm like why was that on your head or in your mind you know but then other times they say some really profound things yeah. like I miss my friends mom yeah. or when do we get to go back to school you know and I can tell their little hearts and their brains are really working and so just giving them that space and that space for us is more at bedtime and then even for you it's a little bit different it's more through play yeah yeah i definitely have taken the the opportunity and, and uh, i don't know if this is a question later but you know really to, to cherish the time that i have with my boys mm -hmm. now and really pour into them individually through play and um that's yeah. primarily you know the way i kind of yeah pour into them through this yeah and, and i think that with boys maybe maybe not especially but kids younger kids playtime like that's where they learn and so that's where they're going to be comfortable to ask questions that they might not ask otherwise or to say something that you know it might not really be a, a hardcore question about spiritual life and things like that but it might just be one little seed or one little red flag that if we're paying attention enough and at this time in our lives uh, it's hard if you're trying to get work done, but if you're, if you're able to kind of put that stuff away and really listen to your kids, they'll give you information about how they're feeling. We just have to kind of be there enough to latch onto it and yeah. maybe through play or through bedtime, that kind of thing. You can, you can take that to the next level with them. Yeah. Um, that's lots of great ideas, you guys. So play, prioritizing bedtime. Yeah. My family, we don't have it together very much in the morning but yeah i sense with my daughter bedtime is a time when all the feels come out mm -hmm. um yeah. and some of those feelings she may not have even acknowledged until bedtime um and so i think those are some really helpful tips um but talk about how you guys have anything to give during this time we're all wearing lots of hats so how do you prioritize or make space for spirit 
and self-care during this intense time? What are you doing? Yeah, I think that is, um, I think that is the, the question for me. Yeah. Uh, I, this is, we actually had a conversation yesterday where I was just like, I, this is, this is surprising me how difficult this yeah. is for me right now. Um, and <clears throat> difficult in the sense of just everything I was doing just got, just got shifted. Yeah. Um, and now, you know, and then additional expectations for my, for my family and for my kids, but I'm like, but, but all of this. And so I actually realized like, I, I need to be spending more time, um, in prayer, in scripture, in like I, I do, I'm not, I'm not good at it. I'm an extreme extrovert, which is also just terrible in this time as I'm like, anybody more Zoom calls? Can we, can we see each other's faces? <laughs> yes, people. Um, but I think that that's, um, ha having like, for me being really honest with what is going on inside and, and like there is, and I think too, this is something I was thinking about this morning. Like there, we, we're grieving right now. We're grieving and we're not yet, yet for most of us, there still is not yet the grieving of loss of life that I know for New York. Yeah, we'll, that's, we'll have in the next week. That's coming. Um, but there's a grieving of what, of everything that just was, especially if you've got these new little church plants and you're, you're trying to figure, you know, it's like maybe you just had momentum. You had all these plans for Easter and for Good Friday and you were, you were going to engage your neighborhood and it was going to be, you, it's, yeah. it's gone. And so, and realizing too, we're going to grieve differently. Mm -hmm. I think for us as spouses right now, um, like that's what I was thinking about this morning is that I realized, oh my gosh, we're grieving and we're grieving very differently right now. And so Dan, when he's grieving, he kicks into, he starts moving. So he just, he's, he's trying, he's like, okay, well, what can I do? And so he's looking for ways that he can control things, ways that he can. Um, well, yeah, which P.S. isn't healthy grieving. But it's, not, well, it's just it, it is. There's no yeah. for grief. It's all, but like for me, I go total like, I go total shutdown. Um, I feel paralyzed. I I don't know. I don't know what to do. I tons of self doubt. And so for me, it just really this morning going, wow. Okay, I, I need to recognize and be more aware of the fact that we are grieving right now. And so to give him more grace when he's, you know, putting his foot on the pedal and I'm like, for, to where, where are you going? Uh, you know, but, and then to understand too, like, that's what, what I'm, what I'm experiencing. So all of that, I think being honest about that allows me to then be more present to my kids. And like, like one of our kids is just meltdown on top of meltdown right now. And it's like, it's, it's grief and anxiety yeah. and confusion and I think like, okay, I am too. It, it, it's so interesting that all of this is happening during the Lenten season as well. I think, and so I, I am looking right now at the temptations that I often fall into. Mm -hmm. So even like Henri Nouwen has the, the, the three ways that we attempt to define ourselves. We are what we do. We try to answer that question. We are what we do. We are what we have, or we, we are what other people think. Mm -hmm. And I know for, for me, um, the need to be enough and be the best is, is a, is a driving temptation of mine. And so what, how does that flesh out or how does it have the potential to flesh itself out and win in an isolated context like this? And so like, I, I've caught myself the other day going, oh man, I am, I am spending so much time right now viewing what other churches are doing and not in a healthy way at all times. Yeah. Like I have to limit that. Um, I have exercising limits is really important for me right now. Um, uh, even, uh, yeah, I think it's all, a lot of it for me comes down to limits. And then I know too, my comp I'm highly competitive, and if I don't get that out in a healthy way in this context, it's going to become destructive for me and for everybody else that I love around me. And so for me, I've just gone. I got to figure out how to work out hard on a regular basis right now for the sake of everybody. Otherwise I, I start destroying myself from the inside out. So. Yeah. Yeah. So working out, 
find ways to use that competitive spirit, spend getting some time by yourself, kind of to feel your own, feel your own feelings. I say that a ton to my kids, but I'm, I think when we're trying to just meet needs, meet needs, meet needs, it can be really difficult to be like, oh, this is really sad, or this is really scary, or I'm feeling some grief about this. So really good. And once again, doesn't mean you have to have it all figured out, but I think knowing ourselves and even taking a few minutes to even listen where we are. Um, what, what about you, Darren and Carrie? What about self-care and soul care? Yeah, so Carrie's the morning person, and so she's especially good about getting up extra early before the boys wake up to come downstairs, get herself a cup of coffee, um, find her comfy chair and spend some time uh, in her morning devotion. And that's, you know, a routine that she's um, had well before um, the virus stuff kicked in. And she's Listen, been it's actually very selfish. Like <laughs> no one needs to be putting things on me. I just need some time. Yeah. <laughs> I am not a morning person. No. So my quiet time is actually at night after the kids go to bed. Um, now trying to balance that out with time for each other, yeah. which yeah. we'll talk about later, yeah. you know, is, is a key. <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, as an, as adults, we, um, you know, we, we, we try to prioritize our community groups yeah. um, and, our, and our Bible studies um, going virtually. Yeah, we kept um, those going. Yep. So that's been really nice to engage in those. Like you're saying, Amanda, I'm, I'm an extrovert too. So I need people. Um, I need to see people and, and not just, not just my household. So, um, yeah. So I guess I, I wake up, I, I do all my, you know, my devotional time stuff. Um, something else that we do that you guys didn't mention was we have a really hard bedtime, not only for our kids, but for ourselves. Um, I know like during winter break or spring break and things like that, I will maybe let myself get a little more lax with my bedtime, but it, which it kind of feels a little bit like that right now with having my kids home. All the other demands don't, don't feel like it are different but yeah they so want three meals a day i don't understand i don't it's just <laughs> i know <laughs> i it's just i know um, i'm sorry i interrupted yeah. you but there's lots no, of no, you can go right. to yeah it feels it feels like it feels like it should be a little more relaxed because my kids are home but i and i'm tempted to like stay up later and Dan, like you were saying, I love to see what other ch ch churches are doing and I can kind of, you know, take that to an unhealthy level. Um, so I love to like stay up late or I'm tempted to, but we've been really good about being like, nope, we're going to stick to our normal bedtime. And that's, I think, really been life giving for us because we're not then getting into these bad routines and these bad habits while we're also, um, you know, trying to deal with all this. Now, talk to me about how many Cokes I've had in the last, you know, <laughs> week and a half or how many uh, Reese's eggs I had and I don't have it under control. But when it comes to sleep time, yeah, um, that's something that we've really been talking about. Yeah. yeah. And we, we talked about actually with this question we were talking about last night, we used to have a really good rhythm used to it feels like we've done this for months it's only been a couple of weeks but we had a really it good it has been the longest yeah. year of your life it's a lot uh -huh. yes. <laughs> yes. It really we would we would go on dates every other week and we haven't taken time we've been such in go mode of like figuring out what to do with our kids and mm -hmm. ministry and work and all these things that we have neglected each other yeah. so that question last night like really sparked in us like holy yeah. cow we gotta we gotta at least get in the car take some coffees and drive or yeah. something to reconnect in that way because we've really neglected that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, speaking of driving, so one thing I'll say, uh, what was it, like last Thursday or Friday, uh, Darren's really good about just watching my signals and he was like, why don't, why don't you just go get a coffee <laughs> and drive? <laughs> just go sit in the parking lot if you have to. Just so, get out, yeah. Know? So we're just trying to be really get good out, about man. watching each other. Get out. Yeah. Is that what yeah. it was? No. No. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it, That's more how it sounds here. Yeah. Yeah, get out of yeah, here. For the whole family's <laughs> sake, including your own, go. <laughs> so that too, I think we can just be really intentional about watching each other um, to really give each other room to do what we need. I like how you put it, reading the signs. That's good. I read yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we've been married for, well, let's be 15, 15 years in August. Yeah. So 
guess you I, know the signs. I guess I know the signs pretty well. <laughs> Yeah, I think I try to be superwoman a little bit where I'm like, I don't need anything. I'm fine. I'm handling it. I'm handling it. And then the signs happen quickly. <laughs> I need to go for a drive. But yeah. you know what's, what's really interesting is like I one of the things I've been super proud of with our marriage for the past 15 years has been we go out weekly on a date, even with six kids. I'm like, we find the babysitters. We I'll leave all on six Netflix. of them on whatever, yeah. but we go out. And this is, I, it was two nights ago. I was like, oh man, like we need to somehow get creative because this has been a huge, a huge place of rest and joy for our marriage. And it has not been gone for yep. uh, weeks, a yeah. couple of weeks and looks like it'll be gone for much longer. So yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You said rest and joy, and that will take us to our next question. How are you incorporating fun and creativity into your days uh what what are you doing to make it fun yeah i think it's for for us it's we're we're getting ideas on the fly here i wish there was a backlog of ideas but (laughs) there is not yeah Um, we we had a i we had probably like 20 people on a call last night for a virtual happy hour um where we were just like man we need to like this, this needs to not be a prayer gathering about everything going wrong. This needs to be a just laughing and spending a half hour dying as people are changing their backgrounds on Zoom to different destinations. Yeah. Like that, you know. Oh my gosh, this one guy put up Tupac and Biggie Smalls behind him, and I just, I was done. It was so uh, good. It was so just stuff good. like that. Yesterday we had, I mean, yesterday was our 11 year old birthday. So it was full on. Like, you remember the gladiator games on TV? Oh yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Dan was the gladiator with Nerf guns <laughs> and he just was, which again, every time the one child got hit, massive meltdown. I'm like, we know this is coming. Why does, why does that one keep getting to play? We but should the, have but the rest of them had fun. Yes. They had fun. So, so yeah. So I, <sighs> It's been, I mean, I've been just, I've been trying to think through just even little things that I can, I can do with the kid, like in our routine, just when I do turn stuff off and put things away, like when I am present, can I just be a little bit goofier, a little bit more silly with them? Um, It's, it's difficult though. I mean, again, for us, because we're not in our home home, we don't have a lot of the kids stuff. Um. So they're getting, they'll be fine, but maybe a little bored. <laughs> um, yeah, tell us cre- uh, creativity and fun, Darren and Carrie, and then we're going to go to one of our uh, questions that was asked in the question box. Yeah, so I've just been trying to uh, do a lot of things that I've seen on like Facebook and Pinterest. And there are so many ideas out there. Um, but just some things that we've done, we've, I've let them like cook and things like that with me, which they both seem to love, um, dancing and singing and Darren put like an indoor scavenger hunt together. I love, uh, you know, like escape rooms and stuff like that. (laughs) Unfortunately, my kids love that kind of stuff too. So I drew up the schematic of the house blueprint and put little X's where they could find clues. And as they found different clues, uh, they would have yeah, yeah, they would have to solve those clues to find a key, and they had to find all six keys and everything, and, and that was great. Which, can I tell you something? Like, this is not normal Darren. Like, it's really exciting, and he even said this. Like, he's really just looking at, we are really looking at this time as an opportunity to do some of those things that we wouldn't normally do because we're filled with work, or, oh, we've got to go do this or laundry or whatever we just have more time and so like we're finding we're we're just having fun with it as much as possible and i've really just kind of let my expectations go of how clean my house is going to be how um you know things like that how great my dinners are going to look i've just kind of let go of all that stuff and and we've just tried to really have fun um with with them and in playing and things like that so it's it's really not normal which is it's kind of exciting it's really cool <laughs> and i think it's interesting i said it at the beginning of the webinar is finding things that are authentic to you and ways that you might surprise yourself um and i think that's really really neat a, a cool thing that like some of your 
you know, parenting gifts are coming out in ways that you didn't yeah. expect. Um, <laughs> let me yeah. ask, let me ask a question from the question window. Um, let's get real practical. So okay. let's, we know that this, that it, we are not in a place where, um, where coronavirus is in a control is controlled yet. And so there is still a possibility that, um, people in our families might get sick. So how are you thinking through um, setting up your home in case one or both of you get sick? I think honestly, and we haven't discussed this, but my mindset just from what I've understood about the virus um, has just been chances are if one of us has it, we all have it. And so I'm not, I'm not giving too much thought to that yeah. other than the fact, like, I just, I don't think there's I really based on, you know, how long you're contagious for and what you're, I mean, all of that kind of stuff. I don't know that there's any way to practically protect the people in my home. Um, and so I think what we, it's more, you, it's more yeah, of a You say that, but even with the flu, you're, you're hardcore with the bleach and keeping people. Isolated. Sure. So. Sure. I mean, I think more, more than our family, um, because our family now we're we're pretty much isolated here, um, but more than that, it's it's what are the implications if one of us was to get seriously sick from yeah. a ministry standpoint? Yeah. Um, that's more, I think, the logistics that. Um, and no, we haven't thought that one through. So yeah. thanks, we've got something else. Something <laughs> else on your plate. It's fine. Out. It's fine. Question it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Our, we haven't thought that through much no. either. I think the big thing that we have thought through though is because Darren's mom lives with, with us, she's 74 years old. So a lot of what we do all stems from making sure we don't get her sick. Yeah. So like when we're go at the grocery yep. store, we are extra careful when we, we're just extra careful. <clears throat> Maybe limiting the number of trips we make to the grocery store. We, yeah. we do have a grocery store literally just right down the street around the corner from us. So it's really easy if we need to go get some more milk or bread or whatever it may be, but we're consciously saying, yeah. you know, we need to limit not only our exposure for us and the kids, but you know, my mother who, you know, the elderly seem to be more susceptible, yeah. um, I think to the virus. So we've, yeah. we've been thinking through that. We're just trying to think through that. We're making sure the boys are, we're, I mean, being like militant yeah. about their hand washing and extra hand like sanitizers that. around the yeah. house, making sure we wash um, hands, all those kind of things. But yeah. as far as when one of us gets sick, um, we haven't really talked through much mm -hmm. of that. I think we're just kind of living in the praying for the protection, and and if it happens, that we'll we'll deal with it kind of then. Um, yeah. So. <clears throat> for us in our home in thinking through just the practical uh, we live in a 1960s ranch uh, and we have just a basement bedroom that we've thought through that if one of us would get sick that would be the place that we would likely kind of use as our uses our quarantine space um, and it does have a it's, it's got a window which is nice but um, I think just thinking through your own home is a good way to um, think about how, how would we do that? But yeah, we're doing all the things like not sharing drinks and moms barking at the kids to wash their hands. Um, and all those things I think we took for granted a little bit. Um, but, uh, now none of us will ever wash our hands without singing happy birthday. But, um, right. let me go to a lighter question from the chat window. Um, what are you guys doing for date nights since a lot of restaurants and kind of places that you're used to going out are being closed? What are some creative ideas we can give to our folks today? Something I mean, I, oh, sorry, sorry. Go. you can go. <laughs> Um, I, the only things that have come to mind, again, we haven't, we haven't had a date night since all of this hit, um, would be probably going, I don't know, but going and finding somewhere and parking and making out in the back of the car. I don't know. I feel like, there we go. I, <laughs> that down, everyone. I feel like that would be kind of the most fun thing we could do. Yeah. So, I'm in. I, I don't, I mean, there's really not, thankfully we have a car. Again, a lot of the people in New York where we're from don't have cars. Um, but that, or, I mean, it's, it's just, 
thankfully the weather's starting to get warmer so you can be outside but it's like it's going for walks yeah no, normally we think through some board games or something but we're already doing that with kids you know, yeah, I, I don't want to play board games I'm with right you. that's what i'm saying and i'll get too competitive it's interesting as soon as you said get in the car and go make out a bunch of people logged off i don't understand <laughs> what happened but, I they were like, funny, we're going. Or they're like, they're not here. <laughs> Darren and Carrie, what about you? How are you dating each other? Yeah, I think we've talked last night, like going for a drive. In fact, we even do that when, for a normal date night. Sometimes yeah. we'll just grab a coffee and drive and sing. Or we love to sing together or just talk, things like that. Um, definitely with the warmer weather, getting outside a little bit. And I think when our boys go to bed, because we have that hard eight o'clock bedtime, um, we do, uh, if, if one of us doesn't have to extend our work day because we couldn't get work done during the day, um, we'll sit down and say, okay, what are we watching tonight mm -hmm. together and that kind of thing. So even just something super simple, like being together in the same room. Yeah, with, being intentional with our conversations. Yeah. And um, you know, continuing to just pour into each other and, um, you know, have those intimate discussions and stuff. Yeah. It's a bummer though. We do love a good, good restaurant. So we'll have to figure we it did. out. <laughs> we did just, um, because the temptation for us is just to veg out on Netflix at this point. Right. Um, and so we did just buy an annual membership to the masterclass. Um, oh, cool. just because I'm like, Hey, if we're going to be sitting around, might as well learn some. So we just watched like, uh, one on, and, uh, the, the astronaut there was, was a, awesome i was like i could be an astronaut and then i was like i saw like you know, anytime they zoom out and you see the whole earth my stomach just turns i'm like i can't be an astronaut it's too scary. no but i think that's something that we both enjoy is just learning new things together and so yeah. that's been fun yeah. no it's good um let's talk about july 1st so let's think about your july 1st self and your july 1st families um what do you want to have been um, or who have you want to have been when life starts to get lighter in terms of social distancing? We, that was a question last night. We were kind of going through these and trying to think of things that we may, you know, talking points. And that was one that we were both like, who, what do we want to say? And both of us centered it around relationships. So we just want to be able to say that our relationship stayed intact <laughs> and maybe even grew deeper together. Um, and then also that we either kept good habits or formed some new habits rather than falling into some easy, predictable, um, you know, just binging, watching, you know, Netflix, like Dan mentioned, or, um, you know, not continuing to wake up early like I do and that kind of thing. Um, so really definitely relationships uh, stronger is what we're hoping. What about you, Dan and Amanda? There's been a few things that have come to mind. Um, for me, my relationship with extended family, um, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's space for it, uh, like there hasn't been in the past, just to engage with extended family from afar. Mm -hmm. um, and I would love to come out of this just with more time, Doc, talking to to my extended family, yeah. Um, so that's one. I th and I think, and I think part of this is is just like this is the fire that is refining people how to be a non anxious presence to a overly anxious world. And mm -hmm. so I would I would like to co come through this and go. There were some practices and habits formed in this few month process that that has me as an as a non-anxious leader more than ever before in, in the chaos of New York City. Yeah, yeah. Be a non-anxious leader in an anxious world. Yeah, that's who I wanna be, right? Like I, when this is all over, um, which also, we won't you know, make the same, you know, say it again. I'd also love to see another church plant too. Of all of this online connection stuff, I'm like, I would love, and that's a sick part of me, right? That I'm like, I want to be a non-anxious presence, and I wonder if I could plant a church in the Poconos. He's right now. not kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sadie is doing a virtual assessment right now, so get <laughs> half an assessment if, left. If, you want to send if, there's any, if there's any Pennsylvania leaders on the call right now, get at me. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's amazing. Um, any other, I'm going to hit, let me hit the questions here real quick. Um, yeah, let's talk through a little bit. Uh, how, do you have any ideas of how you're planning on transitioning back to school and church again? Have we gotten that far in our thinking? Um, what do you think about that one? Uh, um, I don't think I've, I've pretty much resigned to New York. We're not going back to school this year. Mm -hmm. um, so haven't, haven't thought about that. I mean, I think in terms of church, um, that is also, yeah, <clears throat> I mean, it's just, it's just as a question on timing. Um, I, I, I do think the, what I've seen, um, what I've seen the temptation is for us is to have our kids in school connecting with anybody that's on this online program at school, which isn't a lot. And then two is connecting with potentially some kids during a Sunday kids ministry thing online. And I realized for our children, so much of the, of the depth of transformation they had have come from the different adults that are a part of our church. And so for me, I, I think the transition back into normalcy will be easier if I can connect my kid, keep my kids connected to the larger church and not yeah. in relationships with adults in the church and not just those that are part of whatever kids ministry they're, they're involved. Yeah. So that's about as far as I've got. No, Thank that's okay. You. Yeah. And I, this kind of ties into a question in the question window. Do you think you guys will do things differently as a church on the other side of this? Now we could do a whole webinar on, yeah. on this, um, on this question. Um, but maybe what's one thing that you think you will continue sort of from this virtual church learning that we've kind of learned by doing in the last two, three weeks? Um, I think, um, one, we have the equipment to stream now, so probably going to keep doing that. Um, two, one of the things that we've seen with our kids ministry um, over these last couple of weeks is we've gone to an online kids ministry, not just giving parents resources, but like we have kids church happens on a Zoom call at this time. And so then we have leaders deployed who are doing breakup room, breakout rooms and who are going through curriculum. I mean, and it has been, it's been awesome. It's been a blast. Um, and so one of the things we're seeing from that is like this is tapping into such a felt need in our communities right now that um like getting our leadership even to see do you see when we actually tap into a felt need do you see how people gravitate towards that that, so, that aren't a part of our church we've had people that aren't part of our church yeah. jumping online for kids ministry stuff yeah but i think it's also one of those things where you look at it and you go hey, this is, this is the type of energy that can happen when adults are fully engaged in the discipleship of their kids because their parents are, their parent or their guardians or their parent are sitting there with them on this whole call. So for me, I think one of the questions coming out of this, how, how can kids ministry continue to shift so that it is not solely put in the hands of four young leaders or 10 young leaders? And, and obviously orange, the orange philosophy is a great, it's a great philosophy, yeah. but how do you even put, how do you even flesh that out more in an organic sense? So I would imagine kids stuff and then outreach too. I think the level of outreach that we're going to be able to do digitally, not through online services, but I think through online meetups yep. uh, is, is, is going to be, is going to be substantial in the church in the U S yeah. over the next few months. Um, the question is to share more about what we are doing to connect with parents who have kids participating in their streaming, um, kids ministry. So, um, so again, it's not a, it's not a kids ministry stream. Um, it's a, it's a zoom call. So we use the orange curriculum, uh, currently and, um, what they're doing is they're logging on to a zoom call. They're like, they're screen sharing, um, the curriculum videos. And then we have four different breakout rooms where parents, and so parents are sitting in, they're sitting in that Zoom call with their kids. And it's not at the same time as our service. It's about 45 minutes before. So they're kind of, it's their whole Sunday morning um, experience. And so we actually had a call this morning talking about, okay, well, what's the follow-up from this now after yeah. parents are connecting in? How is it that they're then, um, connecting with each other um so we have some new ideas coming about that but yeah it's also new i mean it's only so, two weeks so 
Yeah, the, uh, the, the intent in a conversation this morning was how do, how do we move? So I think we had six new families that sat through kids ministry this past week that aren't part of our church. And it was like, how do we move them into two or three gospel centered relationships with a clear action step? Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Awesome. Yeah. I, to speak a lot to towards your kids ministry things. Um, I've been kind of challenging myself with the question of how can I use this time to really help parents see that they are the first ministers to their kids and that's their responsibility and not so much the churches. <clears throat> we have definitely a role in making um, sure that we are discipling to children and things like that. And I'm all, I'm a kids ministry director. Like it's, it's a big deal. We have to have that. But um, I think sometimes we, the church does a disservice where we do so many things for the kids but don't invite the parents or challenge them to really be the ministers to their kids first yes. um, and foremost. So I've been trying really hard to make sure that I um, kind of find that balance. And I, I love your idea of having that Zoom call Sunday church. We're doing kind of something similar with just something fun to get our kids and our parents together with. Um, but really calling out to my our parents and saying, we have a lot of resources. Here's some worship videos. Here's where we're at in the curriculum. Here's discussion questions. Here's activities um, and providing those, but then taking that extra step of saying, okay, here's everything that you can do. Here's some ways it could lay out, maybe a video, something like that. We're trying to get creative with it, but really just using this as a time to remind the parents that, that it's not um, the church's job solely to minister to your kids. You've got to be the, to step up and do it too. Um, and, and I've really been, that's something been on my heart that I'm like, this could be that opportunity to really, really plant that in the brains of our parents so that they will take it a, maybe a little bit more um, seriously into that next level. And otherwise maybe they wouldn't because we wouldn't be in this, have this opportunity to do that. Yeah. So I've been really kind of praying through that and, and trying to be creative in that. And I think, I think that's where we want to be and why we wanted to offer this webinar anyway, right? Like, because we're all trying to figure out this virtual thing and watching other churches do it and trying to figure out what works in our context and do all of those things. But the truth is, if we're not prioritizing and leading our families well, um, I don't want the family ship going down, yep. you know, even, even if the church thing is going great. Yep. Um, yeah. And so that's, yeah. that's, I think, where we'll land the plane today. Um, Guys, I hope um, that as you've listened today, you've gotten a couple great nuggets and ways that you can be empowered as a leader in your family and in your church um, to lead in your family and prioritize family and children during um, this unprecedented time. So thank you to our panelists. Um, you guys are amazing. Thanks for taking time out during this unique season. And I'll just remind you, tomorrow at 11, Stadia has another webinar for you um, and would love to see you on that one as well. So thanks again, and we'll see you tomorrow.